RAZ 2022 04 regarding Ravi at 5761 Long Pond Road. The request here is currently to remove the existing conditions from the previous case of these open properties from R1 to R10. The order for the northern lot to be divided into quarter acre parcels for the purpose of building three speculative homes at approximately 2,000 square feet within the next 12 to 18 months. The three conditions that were approved by the Board of Commissioners for the 2019 case are as follows. One, modular or mobile homes are not allowed. Two, duplexes are not allowed. Three, the lot shall not be divided past the two lots requested by the applicant at that time. Access to and from this property is off Long Pond and Dykes Pond Road. It is within the suburban character area concerning the comprehensive plan. R10 zoning is a permitted zoning within that character area. There are no wetlands on the property to speak of. As you can see here, this was previously approximately a one acre lot. In 2019, it was split approximately into these two lots, a little over half acre each. To note the uh, surrounding properties and their approximate size, a third acre running Long Pond and under a quarter acre on Dykes Pond. This was that proposed split in 2019. You'll note here the red dashed line is the applicant's current proposal to split the northern lot into two quarter acre lots over 10,000 square feet each. Overall, staff finds the request consistent with the conference plan and the TRC had no additional objections. Commissioners? I have a question. Okay. It says to remove the existing conditions. Does that mean just the third condition where it's divided into two lots or all three conditions? Moving from the I believe the applicant can best answer that question, but the ask at the moment is to remove the conditions. Duplex in a group of six duplexes on Denelli Drive North. 
and two of the smaller houses on very small lots on Denelli Place. They are examples of what Mr. Radney could do on this property if you have approved his request. I've also taken pictures of um, some of the better planned developments in the area around the lake. These houses are being sold faster than they can even build them on 4-H Club Road for well over $320,000 each. And lastly, I've taken a picture of a couple of the lakefront properties, which is directly across from the lot in question. Um, to be rezoned and wonder how you would feel if this was coming up in front of your front yard. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Mm -hmm. so I, I, I appreciate I appreciate you coming forward. So I, I, I think that your fear is a duplex or one of these one of these homes portrayed in this in this picture right here. Correct. I get that. So if indeed they were subdivided into quarter acre lots, but a truly standalone house built for sale, would you, I mean, that, that was equal to something like this, would That'd you, be much more acceptable. You would, yes. be, you would be okay with that. So, so if a condition is placed in, in, the, in the approval to the county commissioners, you would be okay with that? I'm just asking. Well, we, we prefer, of course, to leave it at two half acre lots, yes. but if they would be normal houses, not modular homes, mobile homes, you know, there are others in the area around that. Of course, Lake Park and Long Pond have so many different size lots around it. Yes, ma'am. It's yes, ma hard to go by. And, 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 and I agree with you totally. I just want to make sure that, that, that we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you coming forward. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. My name is Emily Capaconte, and I live directly across the street from this property. We came before this group in 2019 and were able to get a reasonable plan for that property. So we felt we've already argued this argument for this group with all the logic we could provide. It's hard to get out of our driveways now because the road is overburdened and any additional units place a hardship on those of us who've made our largest investment to live there. We chose that because it's a small town feel, it's quiet, it's the kind of atmosphere we wanted to live in. Every time a developer gets approval for additional units, you are taking away what we paid our money for. So imagine that this is across the street from your house and you have a million dollar investment. How would you feel about somebody allowing anything less than what you've spent to go near you, and especially at the expense of adding units. We don't know how we're going to provide for our own traffic around the lake, so it's hard to add units of any type. So I suggest that we stay with the approval as is. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, we've got time for one more speaker. If you'll come forward, please. My name's Rich Bodie. I live at 5990 Dykes Pond. I've lived there since 1994. There's an awful lot of development down in Lake Park. I've watched that property change hands several times in the close to 30 years I've lived there. There's a reason it hasn't been developed. That's a dangerous, dangerous intersection. Dykes Pond itself is a very small pond with single dwellings along it. There's been a lot of development north and south and east and west. Once this gets developed, there are going to be more accidents on that corner and that confluence. Very dangerous intersection. The speed limit is not abided by. It's often used as a cut through. In addition to the population density that's going to increase with the provision of duplexes, there's going to be more danger. There are no sidewalks. It's primarily a retirement community, although it's not zoned as such. We don't do those kinds of things. 
there are a lot of people who walk because there are no sidewalks down there on the street with the children pushing buggies. I myself am a bike, bicyclist. I've been run off the road at least four times now. I can't imagine taking my bike out and going around that intersection. I'm opposed to any kind of bill, but I understand that that's probably not going to happen. But I think there's a difference between developing land and buying land at a fair market value and then asking to have it rezoned so I can artificially inflate the value. I am very much against this rezoning change. Thank you. Madam Chairman, I know you said he was the last one, but I'm asking for permission to come forward, come on, please. Come on. Yeah, I will make it brief. And myself and my wife are here tonight. We live at 5901 Travis Trail in Lake Park. We live on the lake. I'm sorry, before you go further, for the record, could you give us your name and address? My name is Gregory. And your address, Mr. Gregory? 5901 Travis Trail, Lake Park. Thank you. Okay. Uh, please don't be misled by the way this has been presented here. Right? These people are telling you one thing, and they could change their mind and sell it tomorrow. Okay? And if it's turned into, if it, if it goes to four lots, then you can build uh, four duplexes on that. That's eight more houses. Eight more families on that road, in that traffic, in a hazardous area. Uh, the whole road around the lake down there is striped with two yellow lines. You're not supposed to pass. So if you're riding a golf cart down there, which is illegal, you have to pull over to the side and let traffic by. Otherwise, you're asking somebody to break the law and pass you. So, uh, day after day, I mean, we, we're down there every day. We live down there full time. And I would ask you not to be misled by this. Leave the conditions on there. They were done by intelligent people, which we have a commissioner on this side, and I'm not addressing anything to him, but it was put there for a reason. It's to protect the citizens and the residents of that area. So don't be misled in thinking that, well, these other things aren't important. They are important. They were all important. And please deny this. Just just deny it and let it be. Thank you. All right. We will close out the um, public hearing portion for this case. I'll now turn it back over to the commissioners. I think just for clarification purposes, um, the applicant is only asking to split one lot, if I'm not mistaken, right? He's only asking to split one lot. And they've agreed to leave the conditions of no duplexes or no modular homes. And my understanding from the president of the Homeowners Association is that that would be acceptable if I, if I did not miss no you. Mobile no mobile homes, no modular homes, no duplexes. Okay. So they are only asking to split one lot and not two, just to clarify that. So, all right. Any discussion from commissioners? Jenny, yeah. what are the sizes of the lots that front dikes upon that are directly across the road there? Lot two point three. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, we like about the same thing, half acre lots, don't yeah. we? Uh, just a little bit under. Under a quarter. 43,560 square feet is one acre lot. Uh, a little less than quarter acre. Those are almost 8,700 square feet lots. A little less. <coughs> Some of them vary. Um, but the ones on Long Pond, third acre, a little over 15,000 square feet. So if that one lot was split, it would not be out of, I mean, it wouldn't be. A 2,000 square foot lot would be an appropriate size for that zoning. Right. And as you can see, it fit between 8,000 and 15,000 right. square foot lots. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. If not, yeah? No? Okay. 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 Um, so if not, then, commissioners, I'll entertain a motion. No, <laughs>
Go ahead, Commissioner Wallace. Uh, regarding this case, REZ 2022-04, for the uh, request to remove existing conditions, um, I would like to change that to remove condition three only, and there will be no modular or mobile homes allowed, and no duplexes allowed, and as the, uh, Mr. Howell stated when he came up, the request is only to subdivide one lot only, and that would be the northern parcel to be divided into two one-quarter acre lots uh, for the purpose of building single-family homes of approximately 2,000 square feet. And um, so to be clear, there'll be no duplexes, no modular homes, no mobile homes, and no splitting into four lots. So we're adding one lot. The frontages of these lots is consistent with the frontages of the lots across the street from each of these lots, the three lots that will be uh, the existing lots after this takes place. So with that, I would like to recommend that we recommend approval. So if I understand you correctly, Commissioner Wiles, you would like to recommend approval, but remove condition from the 2019 zoning. You want to remove condition number three so that they can divide one lot only. And then the other two conditions that were placed in 2019, no mobile, modular, or duplexes, those conditions will remain. Okay? Madam Chair, this is just a little bit of discussion on the phone. Sure. So as everybody knows, I'm extremely don't we have to finish the vote? Well, I can get a second and then we can open it for discussion. Okay. Okay. Got a second. Now we may open it for discussion. Thank you. So, so as everybody knows, I'm extremely pro growth and looking at this thing and uh, hearing Jake as he comes forward and all the other all the folks come uh, Ms. Wilman coming forward and discussing it. Uh, I think I'd like to do is modify Commissioner Wiles' uh, motion, if, if, if he's okay with that, to add that 2,000 square feet to actually specify a condition area of 2,000 square feet. And that's perfectly all right with me. At least 2,000. Yeah, condition or heated area, whichever you want to say, a minimum of 2,000 square feet. That, I think that would, that would help out Ms. Weldon's feelings and give Jake what he's looking for also and get a nice property there. At 2,000 square feet minimum. I agree. Okay. Of a condition here. Did you get that, Trey? I did. Are you the second? He is the second. So, Commissioner Wiles, are you amending your uh, motion to approve and adding one addition? I, I agree with Mr. Baker's okay. recommendation. Is everyone clear on the motion now? We need any further? All right, so Commissioner Wilds has, voted, uh, has made a motion to approve this request, and we are going to leave the conditions that were set forth in 2019. No modular homes, no mobile homes, no duplexes. We're going to remove condition number three, and we're going to add an additional that the minimum heated square footage for the homes on those lots are 2,000 square feet. Everyone clear? Any other discussion on the motion? All right, if not, all those in favor of the motion to approve as mentioned with conditions, raise your right hand. And all those against, and that motion carries. Thank you, commissioners, that was confusing.